All right, so my name is Orla Heyman, and I'm a senior, and I am majoring in psychology as well as a combined major of sociology and anthropology. So this summer, I spent 11 weeks interning with NARAL Pro-Choice Oregon in Portland, Oregon. So NARAL Pro-Choice Oregon is a small advocacy group, and by advocacy group, I mean that um, they don't provide services, they're not um, a clinic, but instead they um, advocate for women's health issues. Um, they're also known as the Oregon Foundation for Reproductive Health, and their mission is to achieve gender equality um, by ensuring that all women have access to all reproductive health services. So this includes um, prenatal care, postpartum care, um, abortion, and contraception as well. So really a holistic look at um, women's reproductive health. And they um, strive to achieve this um, through public education, which is manifested um, in their um, emergency birth control access project, which I will um, tell you more about in just a second. Um, they also do political work, so they um, really promote pro-choice candidates in the area. And they also um, work to initiate changes in public health policy. Um, and so with the public health policy, um, they're working on a um, policy that's called the well, the well Woman Best Practice Policy, and I will tell you more about that in a minute as well. So the Emergency Birth Control Access Project is um, a big part of their um, public education campaign, and this is a big part of what I did while I was there too. So just some background on this project. Um, the goal is to provide women throughout Oregon with access to emergency birth control, as well as um, accurate information regarding emergency birth control. There's a lot of um, myths and misinformation about emergency birth control. So um, Neural Portrace Oregon works to do a lot of public education and um, they also do research with pharmacies and healthcare providers to make sure that everyone, including healthcare providers, has accurate and up-to-date information about emergency birth control. So I did a lot during my internship, but these are kind of some three things that I think I contributed most to. So the first is the Emergency Birth Control Access Project. And within that, um, I organized the Woodburn and Kaiser Lit Drops. And Woodburn and Kaiser are two cities in the Portland area. And um, by Lit Drop, I just mean that we were distributing educational materials from door to door. So I organized these lit drops, um, and part of that was organizing the volunteers. So I did volunteer recruitment, I trained volunteers to do the lit drop, and um, I was just the general contact person for volunteers if they had any questions about the project that we were doing. Um, and I also worked out all the lit drop logistics. So mapping out the area that we would be doing the lit drop in, um, I learned to use the VAN database, which um, basically has um, all voter registered voters, and you can find where um, perhaps like Democratic voters are within a certain area, so you can target a specific area um, when you're doing these kinds of projects. Um, coupled with the Emergency Birth Control Access Project, I also did a lot of pharmacy research. And so an example of that um, is what we called our mystery shopper calls. And um, these were really fun. Um, you'd basically pose as a 17-year-old and you would call a pharmacy and tell them that you're in need of emergency birth control, but um, you don't know how it works, you know, can, can they tell you about it? So then you ask them a series of questions. You know, what is it? How does it work? Is it the same as an abortion pill? Um, will my insurance cover it? And if I'm 17, can I still get it? And so um, based on their responses, um, they would get a grade. Each pharmacy got a grade. And um, if they did poorly, then we would send one of our staff members to go um, give them some updated information about emergency birth control. And if they did well, then we would add um, that pharmacy to a list of pharmacies that we recommend to women in the area. And finally, um, I got to help with their policy proposal, which was really exciting. Um, their policy, like I said before, is called the Well Woman Best Practice Policy. And the idea behind it is to integrate um, reproductive care into primary care. So that when a woman goes in for um, a checkup with her doctor, um, the doctor will ask her, are you planning on getting pregnant in the next year? And um, if so, then these are the things that you should be doing to make sure that um, you're ensuring a healthy pregnancy. And if not, um, these are your birth control options. So uh, with the policy proposal, I did a lot of research trying to find what kind of organizations um, throughout the country might um, kind of be sympathetic to what we were doing with the policy. Um, I got to edit a lot of drafts um, in relation to the policy. Um, so just any documents that related to the policy, I would edit and make sure that they were ready to be distributed. And I got to sit in on meetings with healthcare professionals. And that was really neat because I got to see an inside look into the policy proposal process. This is just an example of the literature that we were distributing during the lit drops. It just details what emergency birth control is, how it works, um, where you can get it. Um, and so this is just an example of the kind of information that we were distributing to people within the Portland area. 
So during my 11 weeks, um, I learned a lot, but these are kind of two things that um, were kind of overarching for my experience. Um, the first is I got an experience in nonprofit management. I've been toying around with the idea of um, starting my own nonprofit um, organization one day. And so this gave me some insight into uh, what the structure of an organization like this might look like. Um, and it also showed me some of the challenges that I might face and also some of the strategies that I can use to overcome those challenges. So for example, um, this summer I found that pretty much any nonprofit organization, a small nonprofit organization, um, is going to run into issues with resources. They're always in you know, need of time, money, more staff. Um, and so I got to see what NARAL Pro Choice Oregon does um, to overcome this. And what they do is they um, try to form a coalition with other organizations so that they can pool their resources um, together. And on a more personal note, um, I found my own place within the pro-life and pro-choice debate. Um, to be honest, I was a little bit wary of entering the internship with a pro-choice organization because I wasn't sure where I um, was in the pro-choice movement. And so this gave me um, kind of some, uh, I, I felt better after I finished my um, internship because um, I found that they were really focused on public education as well as on um, prevention. And so I felt really good about that. So to conclude, I just want to thank everyone that made my internship possible, um, including um, the donation that was made in honor of Oceana Hahn, as well as Tori Barnes-Bruce, my faculty supervisor, and uh, my site supervisor, um, Gwendy Silver.